contributions to discrete time sliding mode observers for permanent magnet synchronous motor drive system. My name is Tiago Davi Curibuzarello. I am a professor at the Federal University of Santa Catarina, Brazil. Let me pass through a short agenda for the topics that we will approach in this presentation. Initially, I will give you a short introduction, then I'll go to some fundamental concepts revisited. I will revisit some fundamental concepts. Later, I will talk a little bit about discrete time sliding mode observe, which is the main focus of this paper. I'll try to show you some superior differentiators and integrators in which these functions are essential for observers. Then I will show you some hardware in the loop verification in which I show you some results. And finally, I'll give you some conclusions. Introduction. Electric drive systems have been used since the beginning of the last century and had a vital role in improving our quality of lives. Actually, electrical drive system is a mature technology and has been used for a long, a long time ago. And for a proper operation of this electric drive system, the information of the shafts speed and positions are crucial. Inaccurate measurements of these quantities may danger the system, and this obliges designers to take special care when employing transducers. In fact, the speed and position of a motor shaft may be obtained either through sensors or estimators. The force may be connected mechanically and may suffer vibrations, and the last use electric variables like current and voltage to compute quantities of interest and later compute the speed and position. And concerning sensorless electric drive systems in which encoders are not used, one of the most used is the sliding mode observer. And then this paper presents some contributions to discrete time sliding mode observer permanent magnetic synchronous motor drives. And this is because usually sliding mode observers are presented in time in continuous time domain. In this paper, we'll try to make some contributions directly in the discrete time and also using superior differentiators in integrators. And the slide mode observer covered in this paper is based on sigma function instead of sine function, thus reducing the problem of shattering. Details of these functions are carefully explained in discrete time framework. And some case studies with hardware in the loop tests are conducted to show that the contributions of this paper can help designers to employ observers for motor drive systems in a straightforward manner. So let's start with some revisiting some fundamental concepts. The first one is the state space modeling of the permanent magnet synchronous machine. This slide shows the fundamental equations modeling in alpha, beta, and synchronized with the rotor position. We have here the dynamic equations for the, sh the current, and also here the induced voltages. Another fundamental concept is the sliding mode observed with sigma function. This equation shows the fundamental, uh, the principle of this observer. Here we have the surface, which is the difference between the estimated current and the actual current. We have here the model of the machine modified in order to include these observers. And here the function f is actually the sigmoid function, which is shown in this for alpha and beta. Notice that we have an exponential, we have here a constant, but this is the sigmoid function. This is quite different from the sine functions in which you have just information so if they if they are negative you apply minus one if the value is positive you apply pos negative positive one in relation to the surface and then computing all these equations finally can get the position of the rotor as well as the speed of the shaft without actually using encoders just computing these equations we have here a chart for the sigma function for different values of a. And notice that, as I was talking previously, the difference here from minus one to one is actually the, the way the error goes to the surface. And when you have it, a soft transition here, which is preferable because you can 
uh, mitigate shattering. But on the other hand, having a, a large here variations may cause your systems to be quite slow. So there's a trade-off in which you have a with a different slopes here. Then going to the control strategy of the permanent magnetic synchronous machine. The machine is driven by the field oriented control, which is this one. And here is the focus of the paper, which is this discrete slide mode observer that we can get. If you see here the inputs of these algorithms, they are the current of the motor machine and also the modulated signals of the control stretches. By using that, you can finally compute the um, speed and the rotor. All, on other things here that we are using space vector modulation. Now, going to the discrete time sliding mode observer, we can see here a lot of block diagrams. The purpose of this paper is actually present some contributions and one of the biggest contributions is to clarify to present in a simpler manner, in a straightforward manner, already in a digital domain, as you can see here, digital filters. And then this is a good approach for those who are in the first contact with discrete time sliding mode observer. If you compute here all the blocks as shown here, we can finally get the position, theta, as well as omega, which is the speed. So all, all the details of these blocks are presented in the paper. I invite you to take a look later and understand block by block and how they are computed as well as the value of the constants. One thing that we can observe here is there is a, an integrator. So we have here the simplest integrator and we have here a derivative. This is a derivative and we know that derivative has some problems with noise amplifications. Then we are trying to develop superior differentiators and integrators. I'd like to mention here that this point is still under development. It requires phase compensation. I, I got some results presented in the paper, but again, this is something that we are still studying and try to improve. And the phase compensation is one thing that must be taken into account because this is quite not so simple. But if you see here in this picture, we have here an uh, ideal differentiator. This is supposed to be the differentiator. But we have here see, uh, a high amplitude at high frequencies, which means a noise amplification as expected. Then we can modify some curves here to present a really low noise amplifications at the end, but a short region of coincidence at this point here. So this curve here in purple is just coincident with a differentiator at, uh, for this short region here and then we should be take care when employing this. Uh, high frequency, sampling frequency is a good choice for that but it's, again we still need to some phase compensations and other stuff to deal with that. At least we have a considerable uh, noise reduction when employing differentiators. Then, after presenting the sliding mode observer and its block diagrams, I'll go through the hardware in the loop verification. And this is, uh, is the table showing the parameters of my machine, as well as some constants here for the observers. And this is the setup of the hardware loop. I'm testing all the control strategy as well as the machine. I don't know if you can see here in this hardware loop uh, device and collecting results using a scope. We have here some results. The first one is the state state behavior of the permanent magnetic synchronous machine electrical speed. So we have here the electrical speed and the estimated speed here and here. We have also the rotor position in channel one, as well as the estimated position in channel two. They are valid for the speed at 500 RPM and also for 1000 RPM. We can see here that they are coincident in steady state. This is expected. It means that our estimated values are equal to the real values. I'm using an encoder here just to check if the estimated values are actually coincident with the estimated ones.
I have here another result, the same for the previous case, but now with 2000, 2000 RPM. And then we have here a variation and transition from the speed reference from 500 to 1000. We can see here that the speed, the estimated speed follows the, the actual, the real speed of the machine as well as for the rotor position. Another result here is when I change, looking first at this letter B, a torque, so this purple curve is the torque, the speed is constant before and after the transition, okay, so there is a transient, but we can see here that the estimated speed is equal, coincident with the real speed as expected, even for a change in the low mechanical load. And this is just the three-phase starter current at 2000 RPM in steady state, just to check if the current is quite good. Some conclusions of this paper presented contributions to the discrete time sliding mode observers for permanent magnet synchronous motor drive systems. The slide mode observer uses the sigma function and it is actually carefully described in already in a digital environmental. Other contributions we were introductions there of discrete time differentiators and integrators with superior performances compared to the conventional ones. A case study in a hardware loop verification was performed to demonstrate the efficacy of the discrete time sliding mode observer. And results showed actually that the PMS speed and rotor positions were accurately estimated through the proposed sliding mode observer. Therefore, the contributions of this paper help designers to employ EDS with discrete time sliding mode observer based control strategies. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have some questions, I'll be so glad to answer them. Thank you.